best year ever. In advance, I want you to make a noise unto the Lord as you Shout one more time as if God just shocked you. It's your wedding. is important. If I tell you to shout unto the Lord, make sure you do it. If I tell you to rehearse your next level, make sure you do it. Because something good is in the atmosphere. As we move into 2023, this is a very crucial year. Things will be shifting truly. Now I'm getting to know what God is saying. Things will be moving. There will be replacements. There will be exponential growth. People will outgrow some spaces and automatically create some places. And tonight, I just want to guide you through a few things. It may not be a loud, preachy service. If you're here tonight, please look at me as if a mother came to your bedroom at about 2 a.m. to speak to you. You've washed your face and you're at alert because it's unusual. That's the way I want to minister tonight. The theme of this days of glory, as God has given it to his servant, is maturing into purpose. And entering into your inheritance. I'm going to be speaking on that. Well, since Reverend has brought my books, I've written 107 books. My books are on Amazon, but I have some hard copies here. Incidentally, this book is about purpose. I have a few of them here. This is one of my favorites. Woman, wife, and mother. I don't want to talk about, you know, all of them. But they are a lot. I'm one of the very few authors that don't have manuscript. I just jump on my computer and I type my books. Because several years ago, the Lord said to me that the way you speak is the way I'm going to make your book to be like fire in the hearts of people. It's a calling. I don't write. I'm not an author because, oh, once you're a preacher, you should be an author. No. I have a calling towards it. And um, even the day I'm going to turn 60... I'm going to be dedicating seven other, well, six by me, and one, which is my biography that someone is putting together. So you might want to have, get a copy. We brought a few. If you're a mother, you need to have this. Mother's summit prayers, prayer points. Even as a father, they are heavy. I received them from the Lord. I didn't copy them from anywhere. We have a few of them. Also, I'm a businesswoman. I'm in business. I'm not only a preacher. I'm a business person. And I'm, I'm into a few things. I just launched my brand, the perfume brand. If you come close, you will smell. Because I said that if you refuse to read my books or you refuse to watch me on TV, you will smell my perfume. Now it's a reality. I have eight of them. I have for big boys, you know, and one for big girls. And then I have some other ones. I think we have the table around. You might want to go there and pick something. Take a good care of yourself. Smell nicely. It's important. Christianity does not mean you should not smell nicely. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, it's not about preaching tonight. I want to speak to you as a mother looking at this theme. 
there are some words that I want to pay close attention to. The first one is maturity. I thank God for the servants of God that have ministered. Papa, Reverend Victor, I know they have dissected. So let me just add my own small one. Maturity. Maturity is proximity without familiarity. How do you know you are mature? When you have proximity to something and you are not familiar with it. It can be your pastor. It can be your leader. It can be your husband or your wife. It can even be your own destiny. You see it every day. You, you have proximity. You're very close to it. But you, you're not familiar. That's when you say you're mature. Maturity is not about chronological age. Maturity is not because I can impregnate a woman. Maturity is proximity without familiarity. And then we look at the word purpose. That speaks about intention, the objective, the end game, the function, the points. I'm speaking tonight as a teacher. And then we have the word entering. Which is a present continuous thing. When a man of God releases a theme, the spirit of that theme is in the atmosphere. So, entering talks about going or penetration. And then we have inheritance. which speaks about legacy and heritage. I've tried to define these words. Now, when a child is born, There are three major things that the child inherits. The first one is a family. A family is in existence. Whether they are together or not, whether the man and the woman are together or not, whether the fact that a child is born is a proof that a family exists. And when we talk about a family, Basically, from the layman's view, we're talking about a man and a woman. You know, we can have the nuclear, we can have the extended. Let's not go into all those details. So, a child, first and foremost, inherits, because we're talking about inheritance, inherits a family. Number two, a child inherits a name. So, you get to the hospital, a child is born. Before you even ask about sex or the gender as a nurse or as a doctor, you want to refer to the child say, baby, I did you mom. So a child inherits the name. At least before the child takes his or her own name, maybe on the eighth day, depending on your culture, the child is referred to as baby so-and-so. Baby so-and-so. We're talking about inheritance. And then the third one I want to draw your attention to is properties. <laughs> A child inherits property, the property of the, ch of the parents, of the family. It may not be much and it may be a lot, but there's an inheritance waiting for the child. <laughs> Let me add this as number four. When the child is born, he or she inherits the battles of the family. In 1 Kings chapter 2, David was going to die. And David, you can read the entire, whatever, chapter. David was telling Solomon, you know Shema did this. I don't want to kill him by myself. You know what to do. You know Joab did that. You are a wise son. Deal with him. Every family has a battle. Or has this, its battles. The intensity may be different. In some families, they are not wealthy. In some families, they, are, they live in disfavor. In some families, they don't live long. In some families, they will be rising. Something will just happen. In some families, the first child, it must, it must struggle and struggle and struggle. All sorts of things happen in families. Particularly those of us from the African part of the world. Even over there, they have their own battles too. Mm -hmm. When we look at these four things... In relation to us, we see that we have a family. 
Remember, we're talking about your inheritance. We're talking about maturity. We're talking about your purpose. We have a family. The book of Ephesians makes us understand that. And God is the father in that family. Whether we are adopted or we are like the Jews, we have a family. So you have a family. You are not an orphan. It does not matter what the devil makes you feel. You're special. You have a place. You have a family. God did not send you to this world because he didn't know what next to do. Mm -mm. You are not a biological error. You're not an accident. He planned you. He purposed you. You may be a product of a family planning device that failed. It doesn't matter. If your parents did not have you, you will still have come because for God to change his program, he would rather change the man. So God had it in mind that you will come. And the family you came through is the best. Plus the idiosyncrasies, plus their problems, plus all the whatever. Oh God, if I had to choose, I would have chosen to come from, from the royal family in England. Really? Let them pull back the curtains and then you will run. Say, no, 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 no. If you look at the book of Revelation, chapter 4, you will see the description of your father's palace. It's beautiful. I really want us to read it. Revelation chapter 4, beginning from verse number 1. You will see the description. These things I looked. After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And he, the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet. You know, my old SU, I really love my King James' version. Please. That KJV makes me feel like a Christian. <laughs> I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me and said, Come up hither. You see, it makes you feel spiritual. <laughs> and I will show you things which must be hereafter. This will be very fast. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne. Now, what to describe your inheritance? See your father, see where he sits. A throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardin stone. We don't even know what that means. <laughs> and there was a rainbow, at least we know that one, round about the throne. In sight, like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seat I saw four and twenty elders <laughs> sitting, clothed in white raiment. Just have a pictorial image of what I'm reading. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. I'm describing your father. That's what surrounds him. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits. I can go on and on and on like that. Why are you poor? See your father. Why do you live in a rickety place and drive a dying vehicle? It's knowledge. See your father. Get home and finish that scripture because I want to really, you know, finish my notes tonight so I don't come back there. Hmm. So when we look at this theme, I've shown you what children or a child can inherit. When we look at this, there is one main thing that stands out that the Holy Ghost once was emphasizing in my heart as my assignment here. And it is order. O-R-D-E-R. -E That's what I'm speaking on. <clears throat> order maturing into purpose and entering into your inheritance. Order. What is order? It is the arrangement of things in relation to each other. When you got in here tonight, you noticed that the chairs were arranged. One was not facing outside and the other facing the door. Order. Things arranged in relation to each other. 
the entire universe runs on order. That's the reason you don't use, when we came here this evening, we didn't find Reverend Diola's cooking pot with flowers. That's why you park your car in the garage and not the kitchen. Order. That's the reason you buttoned up your shirt and you didn't use your shoe as your toothbrush. Order. These things, we may not be conscious of them. But you see, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, nature teaches decency. Order. God says, let everything be done decently and in order. There is no way you can enter into your inheritance. There is no way you can mature into purpose if, there is, if your life is disorderly. This is what I brought tonight. Order in every area of your life. What is order? It's about particular sequence. It's about enumerated collection of objects in which repetition is allowed. In which repetition is allowed. Therefore, any success that is not replicable is deniable. Don't tell me you are successful if I cannot say the principles you followed and I can study. Because success should leave clues. Just like failure. Don't tell me you are successful without a story. How did you get here? Where were you before? What are the processes? How did you enter your own inheritance? Don't intimidate me if you cannot tell me your story. I need to hear it. How orderly is your life? We're talking about patterns of accomplishment. That's why I said it's not preaching tonight. And it's okay for you maybe to go back and watch it on YouTube if you can't really make too much of your notes, if I'm too fast. In building a house, there is a pattern. If you want to build a house, there is a pattern. You clear the site, you prepare the site, you grade it, you pour the foundation, you frame, I'm um, into a lot of construction. So, you know, and then you start building, putting the, the stuffs together, the blocks. Then you roof, you do electrical, plumbing, painting. There is a pattern for the accomplishment accomplishment of building a house. Same thing in building anything. You want to build a business, you want to build a marriage, you want to build a relationship, pattern. Order. Order. I'm taking you on a journey tonight and I want you to come along. It is about pattern. It is about methods. And it is about regularity. A systemic way or form of accomplishing something in an established way. Reverend, somebody said these days, I, I teach like a lawyer. <laughs> I don't know, but this thing affects me. I hope it's okay. Okay. I've prayed for you. You will understand what I'm trying to say tonight. I really took my time to pray. So you see, it's a systemic way or form of accomplishing something in an established way. My second foundational scripture tonight is Genesis chapter 1, beginning from verse 1 to verse 31. You will see what I'm talking about. Why the repetition? Why the tautology? And the first day, the Lord said, let there be. We can read a few. And God said, let there be light. That's verse 3. And there was light. Please go on. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be the firmament. Excuse me. Why the tautology? Why the repetition? Till you get to verse 31. When the Bible says that the things that Jesus did, if he were to write, there will be no space. Why this tautology? And God created the heaven and the earth in six days. He created light. One, five, this, this, that. Full stop. Chapter 2. But look at it. Order. Repetition. Pattern. Consistency. 
And as you read that scripture, you see a lot of things that I don't want to go into tonight. You see that if you say it, you we see it. And it's not just say it once. You see repetition. Faith coming by hearing. God was teaching us something. You see order there. Everywhere was dark. Everywhere was void. God did not just say, okay, let's start creating. He first brought order. He brought light. Let's see what we want to do. A lot of people, I don't want to jump my note tonight. The reason why a lot of people have not been able to enter into their inheritance is what we're talking about here tonight. Disorderly living. No order, no organization in their lives. They're born again. They are fantastic, brainy, bold, beautiful. But you look at their lives and it doesn't measure up to their age. It doesn't measure up to what they should have been. That's why God brought me here tonight. Let's set things in order so we can truly enter maturely into our inheritances. Hmm. Every life that we succeed must be orderly. I want to try to say to my notes, haphazardness is failure. Haphazardness is failure. What does that mean? Lacking any obvious principle of organization. It must be obvious. How organized is your life? The problem is not with heaven. The problem is not with God. Now we are in another year. It will shock you that very soon we're going to be hearing Merry Christmas again. You cannot continue living the same way. No, you can't. No, you cannot. A few years ago, I said to myself, I want to define my life in just three words. Three words. I picked my pen. I was in Canada. I picked my pen and I wrote, number one, when you remember FFA, when you remember from carefully Sadejima, what should come to your mind? I said, number one, as myself, blessing. Now, let's break that. I said, number two, billionaire. Then I said, number three, barista. Yes, 2018 slash 2019. Then a few months ago, I looked at my life. And I saw that the first two is gradually becoming a reality. I'm a blessing. Even the devil in his craziest state knows that I'm a blessing. Even if he's mad, if the devil is mad, he knows I'm a blessing. He doesn't need to like me. For you to criticize my message, you must have listened to it. So you are a confused fan. Because if you didn't listen to it, you would not be able to crop something out. Does it mean I'm always right? No. That reminds me that I'm human. I acknowledge. Maybe I was too passionate when I was saying it. Maybe I was just letting my opinion be clear what I was saying. But excuse me. The good things I have done surpass the bad. So, I will not allow you pin me down to the bad that I've done. After all, you too, you have done bad things before. And by the way, it's my YouTube channel. Go and create your own too and be preaching your own. This is my, why must you always come to my page to take my message? You to preach your message. That's just by the way. So, so I, I noticed that that's, then I said billionaire. What does it mean, take to be a billionaire? Reverend, Years ago, I made up my mind that I will not work with my mates. I will befriend accomplished people. How did I know that? I studied Joseph's life. I'm sure I won't be able to finish this message tonight. I studied Joseph's life, even in the prison. He looked for the butler and the baker, people that were connected to the man. He said, bro, <laughs> what is happening now? Your face is not looking. You want to move fast. Befriend accomplished people. If you are the best in your group, shift. Look for accomplished people. Look for their books. Look for their tapes. Look for them on YouTube. Look for them everywhere. Stare at them because if you can look at it, you can become it. You look at what you... You look like what you look at. Continue to behold it. Continue to behold it. One day you will become it. The anointing can be transferred via yes, radiation is what we call it. 
in 2023 to maturely walk and enter into your inheritance. Look for accomplished people and tie your life around their aprons and follow them. Stop wasting your time with your mates. Let your mates be running after you. Be the leader in your group. Run. Run. So I sat in the car and I was driving. I was about to drive out of church. And I looked, you know, a sister walked up to me. We just got talking. And I said, you know, I have two regrets. It's paining me as I'm talking now that I have two regrets. She said, really, mama? What? I said, number one, I wish I understood IVF. I would have donated my eggs because I'm very fat, I know. I had how many children in how many years? Sharp, sharp. My husband is a sharp shooter. Pim, baby. I said, I would have donated my eggs. Why will couples be looking for babies? Why? Without collecting any combo, I would have given them one to IVF. Anointed eggs. I said, I said, then number two, I wish I studied law. Then she said to me, it's not late. I said, at 60. It's not late. Go do it. The following day, I went to obtain the form. Following day. And then my husband now did the research. And the latest thing now is that your most productive years are between 60 and 80. Go Google it. Old age, they have now redefined old age. It now starts at 80. Then one of the baristas in our church said to me, Mama, when you get to law school, you will see that you are a child. You are a baby. There's one man in my school. He's 86. Doing his PhD in English. How old are you? And you have retired because you have three children. I don't even know what to again. Are you not bored? Go to shop. Go to office. Go to church. Come back home. Have sex. Have children. Are you not bored? Is this how you are going to continue to live your life? This is 2023. Get ready to hear Merry Christmas. I came here tonight to make you angry. We fasted over you. We have prayed over you. I'm here to make you to become tired of where you are. It's time to come up hither. Move. Let me shock you. I graduated 22 years ago. I studied English language. You know what that means? And I'm back in school. We are in uniform. Black and white every day. Black shoe. Tiny earring. In school, I'm not permitted to wear this. Tiny. I'm not permitted to drop your hair. You bind it. Principle order. Submitting yourself because of what I want to do. Read and read and read. My back is aching. But excuse me. Very soon, barista. And let me now give you the sweetest part of it. Until I have a PhD in law, I'm not done. Because in the evening of my life, I want to teach. I'm a speaker. I speak. I don't need a note to speak. It's inborn. So let me get a channel through which I can do it and prepare the next generation. And let me now see a man that wants to trouble a woman. We'll meet in court. is evil. You don't, you don't stroll into your inheritance. You program yourself to last. You plan your life. I'm so sorry. I start to be corrected. I don't do New Year resolution. I don't. I don't write number one, number three, number 15, number 20. I don't. One day at a time. What I want to do next, this year, just one. Then I put tiny B and C. When I'm done, then I will bring another one. It's not that in, at the, at, in the middle of the year now, it's July. God, look at me, and I'll be feeling like a failure. No more. No more. That's why you have another year. If I cannot accomplish it this year, I, I push it. They call it carryover, brought forward. Yes, now. God, look at my list. Which list? 
Where did they put it? That chapter 3, verse something. You must write 15. Write the one you want to do. One or two. Pursue it. Focus on your focus. Feel like an achiever. Have energy. Then you move on to the next one. You don't start your year on the note of low energy. Like a failure. I didn't accomplish nothing. Look at my mate. Really? Did you come to this world at the same time? It's your life. In your life, for you to, to get into this inheritance, there must be system, structure, strategy, succession. System, structure, strategy, succession. Succession speaks about replicability. Because success without succession is failure, practical failure. The quality of being able to be exactly copied or reproduced. I'm so excited. I feel I'm living when I see women take their places in destiny. That's how to live. That's my inheritance. When we talk about sonship, there is no sonship without fatherhood and motherhood. Sonship does not just happen. Pattern, order, structure. We'll talk about something tomorrow like I said to you. So people that dishonor parents erase their future. Because you are just digging your foundation, you want to destroy it. Because now you can speak some grammar. So use your mouth and your fingers on the keyboard to speak against parents that have done twice, triple what you are trying to do. Remember life is governed not by miracles but by principles. There is no tree without a seed. And when we talk, I'm still talking about order. Everything is speaking. So I'm drawing your attention to some things that maybe you just pass. Look at the tree. There is no tree without a seed. And this is the order and this is the process. It is first planted. It sprouts or germinates. Then it moves to the, to the level of sampling, which means a tree in its juvenile stage. Then it blossoms and then it's fruits. And I want to take one in the next few minutes that I have. I want to speak to you about the oak. O-A-K. It's a tree. The oak. The oak starts with a seed called acorn. If I had told the media, they would have looked for it on the internet for me and they would have, you know, projected it. The oak is a tree, a mighty tree. Listen, I'm describing something tonight. When I wrap up, you will know where I'm going on this journey. The oak is a mighty tree. You know you have something like Iroko, if you are Yoruba, those big, big trees that you see everywhere. So, something like that. The oak starts with a seed called acorn. The acorn is a nut. It's just a nut, like you eat your nut, you know, um, what kind of nuts do we have? Grand nuts, you know, those nuts. And it is usually a single seed, although sometimes two. But it is in a tough, leathery shell. Mm. God did not create you to be backboneless. To enter your inheritance, every little thing that happens, you are down crying, finish yeah, my life. Oh. No, not in 2023. Not in 2023. Okay, Lala. Okay, okay, okay. Storms will come. All sorts of things will come. Hey, after the storm, you take your stand and say, Moye. Mm. It shook, but it didn't fall. You can't get into your inheritance as a mature son. And we're not talking about gender. If everything, every billow, every storm, makes you jelly. God is not raising backboneless banana Christians. Wake up and be strong. Wipe your tears. You'll be backbitten. You'll be gossiped about. It's the breakfast of champions. Don't let anybody distract you. Look at their lives. And look at your own. Don't be distracted. 
The oak starts as an acorn. The acorn is a knot with a very strong, tough, leathery shell. It is in a cup-shaped structure. And it germinates in a loose, moist, and nutrient-rich soil. I know it's a teaching. Thank you. And it germinates in a location that gets plenty of sunlight and rainfall. Mm. In 2023, don't gallifant around. Don't have many fathers. Don't worship in every church. A rolling stone gathers no moss. You want to be mature? We're talking about sonship. You want to get your inheritance? Be in a place where you can get, thank you, God bless whoever is there. I owe you $20. Yeah. At the end of the service, come and meet Reverend D. I will have given it to her. Pick it from her. Give me a few more minutes. Reverend, just give me like maybe 15 more minutes. Okay. So you see, stay where there is sunlight and rainfall. Stay where the word of God is rich. Stay where you can be rebuked. Stay where you can be corrected. Don't leave the choir because they told you you were wrong or you were late. Don't leave your place of inheritance. Don't leave your place of destiny. Remember, I'm taking you on a journey. We're talking about, look at the oak. Look at it on the screen. See the way it started. This conference didn't have its title as childship. He says sonship. Isaiah 9 says, unto us a child is born. But before the government can be on his shoulders, he had to become a son. No government comes upon the shoulders of a child. Governmental anointing in politics, in ministry, in money, in wealth, in business, in marriage. That's the problem we have. And we have a lot of divorce going on today because boys are getting married. 40-year-old boys. 33-year-old girls that cannot prepare ordinary pap. That cannot pray for 10 minutes in tongue. Bottles come, they are on their faces. Flat. Sister-in-law says something, they are crying. No baby for three years. They want to backslide. Look at the oak. Look at the acorn. Do they even look alike? Listen to the last statement when I'm rounding up. The last statement I want to make about these two. If you didn't hear anything, you must go home with the last statement I will make. I'll soon be there. It's a process. The theme of this conference in our tribe here is a process. Entering into your inheritance in a mature way. Not just crying and falling. Somebody is abusing me on the internet and so... Opinion is the cheapest commodity on earth. Everybody can afford it. Is that why you want to live your life? Is that how you want to run your life in 2023? You don't have time for such rubbish. A few days ago, I was in the study, and then one of my sons in, in, in church called me and said, Mommy, did you, did you hear what somebody, somebody is saying about you and something on the internet? And something, something, something. I said, Get me some ice cream. See, mommy, what did I say? Get me some ice cream. Go get some for yourself. Because that's another unpaid for popularity. It didn't cost me anything. And people started following me to come and see who they are criticizing a few days ago while I was taking ice cream. 
said, why are you taking Panadol for my headache? In 2023, this theme is from God. Sonship, not childship. Inheritance is waiting for you. But you cannot wiggle your way there. God give me a, a superman. God bless me with a great wife. Excuse me, are you a superwoman? Are you a great man? God is a businessman that is profit conscious. He doesn't have too many of them that are solid. So he will not just give them, dole them out. Because in marriage, what is important is who you are, not who you marry. Because life will always attract. Look at your life. You can tell what you are attracting. You call it the law of attraction. But it's a secondary law. It is the law of vibration that is a primary law. Yes. It is what you resonate. It is, that's what you attract. Because in physics, you know, nothing rests. Everything is moving. Even the corpse is moving. Go Google it. Otherwise, why will it decay? This house is moving. Simple physics. Stay where there is plenty of sunlight and rainfall. It is children that go everywhere. Come and take sweet. Yes, ma'am. Am I saying for 24 hour miracle possibility jam jam ministry? You're on there. The last pit of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you go there. Okay, Chukwu and Sons Christian Church, you go there. Running Elter Skelter. That's your inheritance. That's where you're going. It's a process. The acorn germinates if unmolested. And when we talk about molestation, we're talking about assault, harassment. Torment, abuse, hindrance, attack, pestering, disturbance, rape, injury, intrusion, not meddled with, displacement, interference, hurt, harm, dislocation. Who molested you? Who raped you? I'm not talking about sexual rape alone. Imagine that this, my phone, is an ant, A-N-T. And it's trying, it's going. And you put a blockage on its way. It will maneuver. While it maneuvers, you put another one, it will maneuver again. Some people have been maneuvering for years. Because of assault. Injury. Who said what against you? The acorn becomes the oak if unmolested. Who molested you? Who made you become a spiritual dwarf? Who injured you? Who assaulted you? Who hurt you? Your marriage hurt you? The church hurt you? The social media? Your parents? Your husband, your wife, who used your mistakes against you? Who used your weakness against you? Who misjudged you? Who called you names? Who capitalized on your errors? Who betrayed you? Who jilted you? Who wasted your loyalty? Who? Who said what and hindered your growth? Maturing into purpose and entering into your inheritance. Romans 8.28 Message translation. That's the reason we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Genesis 49.22 I'm closing. Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well, whose branches run over the wall, who maturely went into his inheritance. The archers have sorely grieved him. 
and shot at him and hated him. This is what matures you. Stop dodging attacks. Stop dodging challenges. Stop dodging. Use those stones thrown at you as blocks to build skyscrapers. His bow abode in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of your father, your relationship with God in 2023, who shall help you. And by the Almighty who shall bless you with blessings of heaven above. Blessings of the deep that lies under. Blessings of the breast and of the womb. Everyone was talking about this earlier on. The blesser, the keeper. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. Unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. You see the inheritance. They shall be on the head of everyone listening to me tonight. And on the crown of your head, because you've been separated from your brethren. Joseph matured into his purpose. It's once in a while I preached from my notes like this, reading it out. Hmm. He matured into his purpose and entered into his inheritance. God knew what Joseph would be carrying and had to prepare him. Whatever you are going through is not a waste. Dream. Dream again. Dream is free. Dream your dream. I made a post a few days, some days ago. I said, Joseph's brothers did not hear that he called them stars. They only heard bowed. He said 11 stars. At least hear that one. He called you stars. Whether you are boy or not is not the point now. <laughs> but you see, jealousy is both blind and deaf. Genesis 37. Joseph understood that it takes maturity to enter into his inheritance. So he said in Genesis 50, 19, Joseph said to them, fear not. Am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good. That's maturity. Therefore, because he understood that, he now prophesied. In Genesis 50, 24, he said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land, unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Israel and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will visit you, and you shall carry my bones from thence. Why did he say that? Because of Matthew 27. Did you see the process? While he was in the pit, while he was in Potiphar's house, while he was in the prison, maturing. Maturing until he entered his inheritance. And because he understood purpose, he now spoke. He said, when I die, I know God is going to take you out of this place. Don't leave my bones here. Carry. Because in Matthew 27, the Bible says when Jesus resurrected, the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. I believe Joseph's own too arose. Because he was buried there. You see, when you live with grudges, unforgiveness, hey, until we meet in heaven, you hinder your future. People will offend you. It's part of the majority. God uses pain and people to mature us. The oak grows into a mighty tree in about four to five years. And the oak can live for hundreds of years. Your inheritance is mind-blowing. It is ageless. It is transgenerational. You cannot finish what you carry. It is a lot. Inside the acorn, there is a mighty tree that can grow up to be 45 meters tall. That is 147 feet high. Sir, please step out. How tall are you? Six two. Six two. I am five seven. Please face the church. He's six two. We're talking about one hundred and forty-seven feet. That's 
42 human beings. See the way it started. After process, it began to grow. What you are going through is growth. That man shouted at you. That boy shouted. Your mother shouted at you. It's part of growth. In 2023, don't waste your experiences. God is very intentional. Be intentional too. See what the oak that started as an acorn can become. 42 of my brother, the height. What you carry is a lot. You can't finish it. Thank you, sir. Beg your pardon. That's 24 human beings standing on each other. You are not as short as you think. You are big. You are tall. You are loaded. This is the statement I said you should listen to. The acorn is the tree concealed. The oak is the tree revealed. Everything I am, I was. When Reverend D gave birth to her son, at a point in that boy's life, well, he's not a boy anymore now, young, young man, she and Reverend Eboda did not go to God to say, Father, please put spermatology. Lord, please put kidney. The boy is five now. Oh God, put, no. Everything I am, I was. That's your two-year-old baby girl. Everything it will take for her to be a mother, she has. The acorn is the tree concealed. When you are concealed, you don't look like it. Particularly when your mates are growing. Getting married. Having their babies. It appears as if God is hiding you. They are buying their cars. The acorn is the tree. But do you know what? You are taking root You know why there is that delay? It is because of the load you will carry. My father's house in the village, the foundation is not as strong as this building. It didn't take time like this building when Reverend and his team were building this place. The acorn is the tree. Concept. You think your time is being wasted? No. Because of what you will carry. Because it will still carry AC. My father's house has AC, but it's not like this one. It's not hanging on the wall. There's no structure like this there. What you are going through is because of what you are going to become. Everything you need as an inheritance. You don't need to even pray. Because Colossians 2 10. And ye are complete in him. The oak is the tree revealed. The Lord said to me that in 2023, don't joke with two things. Thanks and tongues. Harvest house, I always, I always download here. You are usually maybe the first, the very first place 
I come to. I always begin the year with you in mind. I come here and sit down. Later. Personal issues. Things God is speaking to me. In 2023, thanks and tongues. Don't joke with speaking in tongues. And don't joke with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. When you are in pain and you don't understand, do either of those two. Maya Bush can't tell you. Regis can tell you. And I want you to stand up now, and that's what I want you to do. Make a ye bogosh candle. I'm deliberately holding reverence hand. We are imparting my ye bogasata ya bogash kendeli borobogos kendele bagagagagaraba. Don't look around. Don't look around. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. You are shifting something. Maya bogazeke libre gezandeli bagazada ya gadabala bara bogos koto yo progos kendele bage. Let's begin to reveal the tree. Let's begin to reveal the tree. The tree has been concealed enough. May ya ya bagazata ya bogas kote le progos kante yi bagada bala bara bagas kata ya bogos kante. Ligata ya bogos kote le progos kante yi bagada.